3D printing time lapses look really cool. But wouldn't it be incredible if they could also tell a story? printing. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. Next thing you know, I'm going to be telling you about my 3D laser printer. Uh, if you're still here, you're at least a little bit curious how I did this or how you can do this, you know, um, and so I'm going to take you through how to do that. First, I'm going to give you a super, super, super quick uh, basic outline of what it is. So if you're impatient, you can just watch that and go play with it. Then I'm going to take you through how to create the actual model file that's necessary and the math to uh, make the timing correct for your animation. For the super brief uh, explanation, basically you just put one model inside of another and that's it. For some of these examples, what you're seeing is I put one model, we'll call that the plug, the internal model. Uh, in Fusion, I put that inside the other one and did a Boolean subtract or a combine with subtract in Fusion. And then I sliced the resultant model. But you can literally just do this in the slicer. You can take your plug and then your model and overlap them. And the slicer will print the walls of the plug inside the other model. And then you can play with independent infills in Prusa Slicer to get different effects. I would love to see people produce different animations, upload them to printables, so people can then download them and put them inside their models. I think that would be just awesome. All right, that's the super quick rundown. First, I was thinking about the fact that when I make time lapses, first of all, they're awesome, I love time lapses, but also each layer is an individual frame. Wouldn't it be cool if you could use those frames that are being created by your printer to do animation. And so the first test I did with this was of course a bouncing ball. Bouncing balls are easy. It's, it's one of the first animations you know you can play with. And so I created a bouncing ball uh, vector, the different frames of a bouncing ball. I brought that into Fusion 360 and I lofted between those so it would be nice and smooth of a transition between those layers. I just kind of eyeballed the spacing on all that. I created the shape and then I needed something to nestle it in and I thought, you know, it'd be funny if the bouncing ball was inside a ball. So I put it in a sphere and I printed it. Now that was kind of the, the seed that started the camera that you already saw. So here are the results of that test. You can see it turned out okay. Now the timing is, is not great as far as animation goes. Uh, you know, the ball doesn't seem to bounce so much as it just kind of moves and morphs. But you can see the concept was solid. So at this point, I, I really loved the idea of the final model having something to do with the animation, there being a story there of some kind, a, a relationship. And I thought that the Moybridge horse would be a perfect example of this. If you're not familiar, it's uh, widely kind of known as, as the first video or, or close to it or, or something like that, right? And it's the horse galloping. He took a series of photographs and combined those in a cycle to make an animation. There's uh, 15 frames, 16 frames that I, I found online and I brought that into Inkscape and traced each one roughly. Now, um, I skipped the last one so I'd have a nice even number, 15 frames. 15 is divisible into 30, 30 frames is a second of video. Anyway, so um, I skipped the last one because it's the same as the first one. So if you're looping it, it doesn't matter. Um, so now I have all these vectors. What am I gonna do with these vectors? For that, I brought in each frame as a vector and I extruded it. We'll get to the math on how much I extruded it in a little bit because this has a direct correlation to the timing that it ends up in the final video. It's easy math, don't worry. So I extruded it. 
Then I went to the next one and placed it on top of that one and extruded that and went through the 15 frames. Now I've got the internal shape. That's the shape that I'm going to cut out of the inside of something so that when it's being printed, we get to see it. I tried to keep it extremely simple and I tried to make sure that the, uh, the differences between the layers were minor so that it would be able to create this without supports on the inside. Now it's time to create the external object. I started thinking about a cinema camera, but the fact is Moybridge used still cameras and strings. The horse tripped strings and, and triggered still cameras to make his thing. And, and that the unit, the machine he used to display his videos is not, well, it's not immediately recognizable. So I just went with an old timey cinema camera, uh, film camera from the early 1900s. This is not what he used. It doesn't make any sense. Uh, but it looked good, so I went with it. Um, I modeled this in Fusion 360 and I modeled it carefully so that it would be able to print without supports. Because I want the whole video, the printing, and the final product to be the story. You know what I mean? Uh, I didn't want to have to break, you know, supports off or something like that. I just want it to, to film, you know, recording from the bottom up, show the final product and it's done. That's the story. You you get it. You you see that this is about video. It's about the evolution of video or old timey video. You get the point. So, after I modeled it, I put the the uh, after I modeled the camera, making sure to put, you know, 45 degree chamfers on the bottom of everything so that it doesn't need supports. I plopped the horses inside of it and did a boolean subtract. And now I've got my file that can be printed. A regular slice does it. That's it. That's the whole process. Like I said earlier, don't worry. This is simple, simple math. 30 frames is one second. Every two frames is a piece of animation. Now I need to figure out how many layers is a second. And this is easy because every time I print a layer, I take a picture, 30 layers equals one second. Easy peasy. So, we get into this math now. I know I'm gonna slice this at a 0.2 millimeter layer height, okay? I know there are 15 frames to this animation and I want the animation to last one second. Okay, so we start dividing everything out and what I end up with is I need each chunk, each pose of the animation to be two layers thick, which means it's 0.4 millimeters. That is so easy. So when I'm extruding these out, I'm making them each 0.4 millimeters. And I can use that same math to stretch things out. I ultimately decided I wanted the animation to start slower, so I multiplied those first few layers out to be two or three times taller, and then I wanted it to speed up. So I decreased the height of the layers. What we end up with is every cycle is a second at the end and the fatter layers at the beginning are taking longer. Okay, time for some examples using Prusa Slicer to just combine two models because that turns out to be so much easier and more, more kind of accessible to more people because people can just upload different plug animations. Now that you know how to make them, you can upload them to printables and other people can embed them in their files. So basically you just 
pull in both your files into Prusa Slicer and overlap them. Then, once they're overlapped, you can see if you slice it, you've got walls here already. You're, you're halfway there. You could just leave it like this and it would probably show up just fine. Then you can actually go in and play with the individual infills of both models. So you could set, for example, the external model to have a very low infill. I chose rectilinear so that it would be less distracting as it was filling up because, you know, the, the gyroid moves around on time lapses and I just wanted it to, to be still. And then on the internal model, I set a very high infill level so that it would look solid for the most part. You could set it to 100% and get a pretty good result. If you're using Prusa Slicer, I don't know about other uh, slicers, but if you're using Prusa Slicers, you can add your plug as a custom shape in your negative volume gallery, and then it will subtract it from your model and you won't even have overlapping infill. That's how I did it. Um, I really would love to see people explore this and take it further. That, I think, would be awesome. Uh, I want to say a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. They've been following along and seeing previews of this the entire time that I've been working on it. And uh, thank you for watching and sticking around for this long. I'll see you on the next video.